Mine's Provide here and today I want to come at you with a pantry organization tips and tricks video. But of course the rebel in me that always wants to be different and original is really trying to make sure that I approach this in a different light. Now we all know the different steps that we all take to reorganize our spaces and of course when it comes to a pantry we all know that you purge items when reorganizing. You clean your pantry out, you group your items, you reduce packaging, you get new containers and you do all of the basic steps that we all talk about. Now the only thing is a lot of people don't really tell us how to achieve the perfect pantry organization because no one's really teaching us how to accommodate for growth. No one's really teaching us what to do with all of those items that we have in excess or maybe don't fit in the containers that we bought thinking that they would fit. So there are definitely things that we all learn along the way and I really want to dig deeper and share that part of the organization with you guys. So I am really going at this in hopes to help you guys achieve pantry peace and somehow inspire you to complete your perfect pantry on a budget, of course, and hopefully make sense of this potentially forever problem that we could all easily face when organizing our pantries. Okay guys, so now we're about to get a little real. Before going any further, I want you to ask yourself a question. Why are you doing this? Is it because you see other people doing it and you feel like you should too? Well, see, here's the problem with that. If it's not coming from a place of inspiration, it's not coming from a place of uh, consistency and a lifestyle change, then it's most likely going to be a waste of time, energy, and money. You have to be willing to keep up with the system until it is completely successful for you and your family because it will require you taking time to figure out what is going wrong, what is working, and how can you adjust for any changes that your lifestyle may also be going through. But if it's coming from a place of inspiration, I wanna share the information that I've come to realize while going through all of my different failures in my pantry system, because we are a functioning family, and so though I know Pinterest and uh, like Google images and stuff can be very tempting, to go out and have the perfect cosmetic pantry, a lot of the times it gets destroyed because we are actually living life in our homes. We are not completely and solely responsible for the organization and those systems. Our children also access those systems, our spouses, family, friends, whatever, and they need to be simple enough to maintain no matter who steps foot into the house. And I think I have completely learned and perfected that system for my own home and I have found a way to allow things to shift with change. Now, number one is probably the most important step of all, and it is that there needs to be a research period. Research, period. You have to ask yourself specific questions, like number one, what do you buy that you do need? What do you buy that you don't need? And where can you find the best supplies for your budget? Now, why is this important? Well, we all make the mistake of getting inspired and getting excited by videos and things that we see. And the first mistake we usually make is running out to buy supplies, not really thinking about those things that I asked first. So either the problem can be that we buy too many of one type of organizer or we don't buy enough or we buy something that we thought looked nice but doesn't fit in our system or in our spaces. So it can be very, very frustrating in the beginning and kind of overwhelming and make you just shortcut to the end point, which isn't really well thought out. So it's most likely to fail. Also, we never really keep in mind the things that we don't buy that often. For example, if you're experimenting with different types of recipes or different types of foods, you never really factor those into your organization system whenever you're out looking for the supplies to store all of your items. So a lot of the times there won't be any space left for those items or there will never be any space left for the items that you bring into the home that are not regular items. What do you do with them? They start to clutter up spaces, they kind of just sit out and around or they just make things not work as well as they should. The next thing is you really have to think about what kind of system you want. I've spent about half of my life in the restaurant industry so for me, Accessibility and food prep are essential, along with stations in the kitchen. For example, I do have a dry food storage station, I have a beverage station, I have a prep station, cook station, and pantry. So I have a lot of different stations in my home that just make moving and doing things so easy. 
So that's another video for another time. I am just going to be covering what's inside my pantry and how I keep it organized, which is my everyday reach for product that isn't a part of maybe lunch prep or things like that. So you have to know whether or not you're willing to take that time to go through and purge product packaging or do you not care about the product packaging? In other words, your cereal boxes, your pasta boxes, your uh, rice bags, whatever it is that is in a product packaging, do you care about those and do you want to take the time to remove all of that and consolidate it into containers and into different things? Now for me, as I said, everything has to be accessible. So in this video, you're going to see a lot of consolidating product and removing product packaging. It just makes things so much nicer, so much cleaner. And for me, it's visually pleasing because I am inspired to use those supplies when I can look into my pantry and see them directly. Also, I am a stay at home mom. I work from home. I do everything here. So I have that time to go through and do these things. If you don't have that time, then maybe for you, keeping items in their packaging might be more helpful, might be more stress-free for you and your lifestyle. So definitely decide on the two. But for this video, we're gonna be working with my system, which is consolidating all the products. Okay, so in your research period, you need to know the things that you buy often, you need to know how much you buy, and how much you actually use. Along with that, you're gonna have to go around and do some research in different stores and find maybe bins, baskets, jars that may be in your budget. I would definitely suggest for baskets that you go look at places like Big Lots and Walmart because they do have very affordable bins that are nice and pretty. Other stores like TJ Maxx, Ross, uh, Marshalls, and Dollar Tree 99 cent only store they also have affordable products for you guys to use in your systems so definitely do some research and try to take a look at the size of your pantry see what size items or bins baskets containers can actually fit in there and start to calculate your budget and make sure that you stick to a low budget because that is one of the bigger things in this process because you don't want to risk wasting too much money also, you wanna keep in mind color schemes and things that can actually be transitioned into other parts of your home in case they don't work in your pantry organization system. Number two, if you are doing this research period and you're looking at your space to see how much space you have, maybe left to right, top to bottom, front to back, go ahead and try to maximize any void spaces. Look around on the side walls, look down at the bottom, See how much vertical space is being wasted so that you can find really, really affordable solutions for things like that. By that, I do have small examples of dollar store dish drain trays that I actually use for my cans. I also have a shoe rack that I use down at the bottom of my pantry, which actually stores tons of baskets and bins for things that I reach for fairly often and need quite a few of, but there wasn't specific spaces for them at the top shelf. Also on the back of my door, I do have this vertical hanging spice rack that is adjustable, but it is kind of costly. So in my DIY playlist, I provide a $6 dollar store DIY alternative for you guys that is definitely functional and will definitely help you maximize your vertical space, especially in somewhere that really doesn't have a lot of storage space on a budget. So definitely check out my DIY playlist for things like that. I will leave this video linked below for you guys. So definitely keep in mind repurposing product that isn't necessarily sold for that purpose in the store, especially when you can get multiples for a buck. I mean, I, that is a definite purchase price for me. Also keep in mind free items. For myself, I did use a ton of two by fours left over from previous projects and I simply wrapped them with duct tape or gift wrap or you can line them with shelf liner, whatever you like and add a decorative element to them or even keep them natural if they've been aged and maybe they're a gorgeous gray color. You can use those to elevate products to maximize the use of your vertical space instead of just wasting space left to right.
Now, no matter your system, you are gonna be tempted to label. I know because when you see all these pictures, all these labels are so gorgeous and they just add a specific look to your space. But guess what guys? I have a secret for you and you've probably never been told this before, but it's okay to not label. I know, it's like sin, I know. Now number one is to definitely consider generic or general wording, okay? Because when you are super specific on a label, it's pretty much a waste of a label. If it's not in the very beginning, it will be down the road. The reason is a lot of your products change and you're not always going to be living the same lifestyle. So if you are specifically purchasing this brand, later on down the road, you might not be interested in that. Or if you're specifically purchasing this type, you might not be interested in that. So it's really easy to ruin a label by making it permanent. So general words are definitely the way to go because it's going to allow you to change the product but actually have the same label because it's a general word. For example, in this house, we always buy pasta. We probably don't always go for a specific type like macaroni, rotini, um, penne, whatever, but we will always buy pasta in this house. So we always have set containers that are labeled pasta to accommodate those pastas. We do not care about mixing them. We don't care about them being blended if one doesn't fit into another. It doesn't matter to us because we're gonna eat it anyway. So for us, it just makes sense to have a general label on each one of those containers that say pasta. Now it's okay to label those with a nice label because you know they're not gonna change. Now for me, I like to call that a live-in container. The reason I call it a live-in container is because that's its purpose, that's where it's gonna be, that's where it's going to go once it's cleaned, that's where it's going to stay forever and always. So it is going to live in that space. Those are okay to permanently label. What's a different kind of live-in container that doesn't need to be labeled? Well, definitely something that is obviously for a specific product. In our pantry, we have two specific containers with yellow lids that are for breakfast cereals and nothing else. Nothing else goes in there. And the reason I coordinated those for breakfast cereals is because they have the yellow lid, they're round, reminds me of the sun. So for me, breakfast cereal just kind of goes hand in hand. And that is a live-in container and the perfect example of something that does not need to be labeled because it's very clear as to what it is. And finally, there are those live-in containers where the product changes so often that it doesn't need a label, but the type of product changes. So it does need a label. For me, I want a super simple solution that can be changed often to accommodate the label for the product. So in my house, I always keep a roll of masking tape, a permanent marker, and scissors in my kitchen so that I can change the labels for those specific type of items. Maybe there are two or three of something that looks similar, but they're completely different flavors. That is something that requires one of these labels. And once it's done, you might not purchase that again, so why leave a permanent label? Go ahead and add your masking tape with your really quick label and you have a problem solved on the cheap. And the great thing is masking tape is totally waterproof, dishwasher proof, super cheap and you get a whole ton of product on one roll and it's nothing fancy and it doesn't look super bad either. <laughs> now let's go ahead and talk about reducing packaging. This is a big deal for me because I feel like product packaging takes up a whole lot of space. That is never fun to look at. It tends to become chaos very fast. So it's pretty important to understand what types of products can be removed from their original packaging and reduced and consolidated into other types of packaging, which would be containers and jars and things like that. Now, obviously dry foods can be removed from their product packaging and put into containers with other dry foods. Wet foods are not going to be something that you can consolidate because once you open your wet food items, you have to refrigerate them and use them fairly quickly. So we're going to need a solution to be able to store both of those type of products, keeping in their individual processes. So understanding the organization process for dry foods and wet foods is very simple. All your dry foods can go into jars, all of your wet foods cannot. They will have to stay in their containers and you will have to find a way to factor those into your system in a very clean and organized manner and also in a way that lets you rotate those products properly. 
if you don't rotate your products properly then some of them will go bad before you are able to use them so that is a very important piece of information is knowing how to rotate and separate your dry and wet foods some of my absolute most favorite ways to store my wet food products are in this pantry so the first one is going to be using a two by four that I covered in decorative paper and some that I covered in decorative duct tape. It was super affordable, nothing over complicated and it's super cheap from leftover supplies that we have from working on previous projects. And I simply took duct tape and paper and wrapped them. I know so easy, but the thing is at the store, they do sell products that are for elevating your jars and spices and things like that. But they're a few bucks they can go from five to way higher than that and the thing is the quality is not the same and it will not support the weight that a two by four will support I mean they use that to build houses right so if you opt to go with the two by four I would definitely suggest getting some in multiple sizes because then you could play with them kind of like a puzzle piece to see how they fit in your space I love that I can have my heavier jars on there and it's not going to buckle the system and it's not going to make it look bad because it's buckling. It's a solid piece of wood. It keeps all of your items structured. Now, if you need to, you can stack multiple two by fours to get more elevation, but my pantry doesn't go far back. So I don't need that much elevation in the very back. Next, I love this one guys in my first pantry organization video. I was so excited to find the solution for you guys. I also used it in my mother's affordable pantry redo or reorganization video as well. I found a dollar store dish racks at the 99 cent only store. Nothing over complicated. It's not super fancy. It doesn't have the utensil holder and all that stuff, which makes it the perfect piece for this system to organize my cans. There's nothing like being able to reach in, grab something and have it cycle itself out. I think that is pretty awesome. So as you reach in for your cans, your cans will roll to the front and that helps you with your FIFO system. Now in the restaurant business, FIFO is a big deal. It's first in first out and it's what's going to make sure that you are cycling your food properly so it doesn't go bad. Since you are making sure that your food is rotated properly using the FIFO system, you also want to make sure that it's easy to use your system. Now it's more likely that people will not follow your organization system if it's too hard to follow. Now that also comes along with everything else. If you label too complicated, no one else can help you refill or reorganize the system because it's too complicated and only you understand what's going on. It's also important that you make sure you have one step in systems along with one step out. In other words, it's one step to put it in one step to pull it out one step to put it back. This is essential to maintaining a clean system. The reason is if it's too much work to get it back where it needs to be, most likely it's not going to get back where it needs to be. If it's too complicated to pull it out, you'll never use it. So for us, we always make sure that everything is categorized in the easiest way to just reach in, grab it, pull it out and put it back. Super simple. Now that was pretty important having a family that is fairly busy and I delegate work. So if I tell my kids, go grab this, go do that, you know, this, that, and the other, they have to be able to access these systems as well. And I also have an older son who's 16, who does cooking on his own. And I want to make sure that boy gets stuff back where it needs to be, because there's no excuses in this house. The last bit of information that I'm going to share with you guys is that you definitely need to have a miscellaneous section. So at the top of my pantry, I have several baskets with different categories of things, including overflow sauces or any sauces that we're going to be using, sweet sauces, rare sauces, and things like that. I also have some for some pre-packaged seasoning packets and those packets that you get from restaurants, any overflow open product bags, and overflow refill seasonings. It's really important to have this stuff categorized in its own space kind of up and out of the way so that when you need them, you have them, but they're not in the way taking up extra space that you don't have. I did cover the contents of these baskets in my previous pantry on a budget update video. So I will leave that link below for you guys. So that is pretty much it for this video guys. And in closing, I want to let you know that the most important thing about this is that it doesn't have to be picture perfect every single day. You can go through once a week to retouch everything that's in here and make sure that you're not allowing things to go to waste 
making sure that all the empty containers are pulled out to be clean, making sure that you're using all of the proper products that you purchased. It's super simple to maintain if you can see everything and everything has a place. If it's easy to grab and go, then it's most likely easy to put back when you're done. So I really do hope that you guys enjoyed this video and got a little bit more information than you anticipated. I know it's not exactly a full empty out the pantry and do all this other stuff, but I have other pantry organization videos on my channel that have that type of information. But I really wanted to kind of tackle the reasons as to why I have had failing pantry systems in the past. And what I've learned from those experiences, aside from just cleaning, purging, and putting things in different places. It's not about that. It's about understanding what works for you, what works for your family, what type of growth you have, what type of lifestyle you have, and things like that. And if you're willing to go through and manage a system that is probably a little more complicated. Now for me, this is so easy. It may be a little bit more complicated through the research period and understanding what you buy, what you don't buy, what you use, what you don't use, and what you need room for growth with. The only thing is, if you have jars that are not permanently labeled and you have spaces that can accommodate growth and you think really hard about how you wanna maximize your vertical space and what products you wanna use, then it makes it more likely that you're going to have a successful experience in your pantry. Let us know down below what your favorite part of this information video was, which one was your favorite tip and trick. Also, feel free to leave any concerns that you have with your own space that maybe I did not tackle in this video. I also have videos that I will leave linked down below for you guys that are looks into other pantry systems, including a no pantry, no problem system, because I did record one before we renovated our kitchen. Since we still had the cabinets up then, I wanted to do that for you guys before we ripped all the cabinets out. So I do have one of those available as well. If you enjoyed, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, comment, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Google Plus, and my Facebook group at Coupons Provide. And don't forget guys, keep couponing. Bye.